I, I, actually, I actually did not call in to talk about the religious stuff. Beautiful. You didn't. No, I have something completely different. Uh oh. Uh oh. Please carry on. Okay, so I gotta have to preface the story. Mm-hmm. All righty. All right. So shortly after my divorce, right? Yeah. And you're like, well, what do I do now? All right. So you're supposed to do a lot of stupid, stupid stuff in order to get over your divorce. So I said, I know what I'll do. What's the dumbest thing I could possibly do? I'll enroll in college. <laughs> okay. So I went to college for a little bit, uh, and I had to take an English 101 course, right? And this is just the way I've always dealt with school, but I thought you guys get a kick out of this. I just found it earlier today, and I had to share it with you, coincidentally. Okay. Cool. So I, I had to write a, uh, what do you call it, a process analysis paper. Right? right, for my English 101 class, and I would like to share that with you and your audience. Please do. Well, b- before you, before you do that, I just want to say that I can completely identify with the uh, the concept of doing something that is completely pointless and uh, unfulfilling just for the sake of it. Because after all, I was a legally blind guy who used to sit in the back row at strip clubs, and uh, <laughs> that was you know one of those things I used to do in order to conduct business. So uh, go right ahead, sir. Okay. Wow. So the na- the name of my my paper is called How to Dispose of the Body. By nice. Dan- <laughs> by Daniel Lewis Crumpton, IADT Online. Ready? Ready. Nice. How to Dispose of the Body. The divorce is final. You've been fleeced beyond imagination, and finally you've ran out of beer money to simply escape the fact that in the blink of an eye, people you have known your whole life, people you have loved and trusted for years and years, are not as you first estimated. Oh no. In fact, when the word divorce is mentioned, you find that people can become quite nasty and malevolent, and this applies to no one more than your ex-mother-in-law. That's right. The woman that once adored you and couldn't wait for you to put a ring on her daughter's finger has now become the bane of your existence and has been a very astute at coaching her wounded daughter into not only taking you to the cleaners, but having you cleaned like a fish. So after months of pondering on the subject, the opportunity finally arrives when the ex-mother-in-law makes the mistake of meeting you for a cup of coffee whilst not telling a soul she was doing so because she has ulterior motives, as all mother-in-laws do. After she goes to the restroom, you've already spiked her cup with laudanum or the chemical of your choice. After a few sips more, the waitress at the local waffle joint simply assumes her slurred speech and you having to carry your ex-mother-in-law to the parking lot is just another typical drunk customer winding down from the bar's closing. As you feel her pulse coming to a screeching halt, you're confronted with the fact that somehow or another, you must get rid of her bloated corpse. (laughs) Getting rid of a body is never an easy task, but in the case of your ex-mother-in-law, the labor will be worth it in the end. In order to pull this off successfully, you're going to need her dead bloated corpse, either a flatbed truck, if this is your transportation, make sure to also include a tarp, or an SUV with four-wheel drive, a trusted friend or crazy relative with a pig farm, a pair of pliers, a burn kit, items to start a fire with, and a bottle of Kentucky bourbon. Of course, the most important thing is to have an alibi. This can best be retrieved from other male friends who've been through a divorce as well. Prep work. Preparation for disposing of your ex-mother-in-law's body beforehand is essential in walking away from the situation squeaky clean. All of your divorced friends who will be providing you with an alibi must carefully be chosen, which simply entails little more than them having met the demonic witch before her demise. That alone should pretty much have you in the clear of any of them ratting you out in the future. After taking care of your alibi, it is absolutely essential that you let your pig farmer friend or relative know at least one week in advance that said pigs need to go without slop until you arrive at the predetermined time. (laughs) Slop may not be too appealing, but if those hogs aren't good and hungry when you arrive, you might risk them turning their snouts up to your ex-mother-in-law, and all will have been for naught. (laughs) Making the trip. The first thing you want to do after ensuring your ex-mother-in-law has gone to her eternal rest is casually get in your vehicle. You have to remember not to panic and simply act casual as you either place her in the back of the truck or SUV. If there are people milling about, talk to her and cut a few jokes as you hoist her in about having reached her limit for the night. If your transportation is not enclosed, you will want to leave the scene as naturally as you can. Find a poorly lit area free from surveillance cameras and secure her bloated corpse with the tarp. Next, you're going to have to, you're going to want to head to the pig farm on backcountry roads, making sure to go exactly the speed limit. As driving either too fast or too slow might raise some eyebrows from any police hiding behind bushes. The most important element in this step is to remain calm and remember that this is supposed to be fun. I would suggest listening to Bruce Springsteen's I'm on Fire repeatedly for the trip. It has a tendency to mellow out listeners in considerably stressful situations. The dirty work. 
After successfully transporting the body to the pig farm, have your friend or crazy relative assist you in moving it to a barn or shelter where you will have some privacy. Now it's time to take those pliers and get to work on pulling all those teeth. (laughs) (laughs) Hungry hogs can munch right through bone, so no need to worry there. However, the teeth they don't find too appealing, so you'll want to take care of this beforehand. You don't want any dental records coming back to bite you, pun intended, so make sure to keep those little suckers together for safe disposal later. (laughs) Go on. (laughs) Now it's time to ask your friend or crazy relative to remove any jewelry and clothing because you certainly don't want to have a scarred psyche for the rest of your life from the imagery, and then it's off to the pig pen. This might be an appropriate time for you and your accomplice to crack open that Kentucky bourbon and take a snort or two before hoisting the body to the pigs who've been salivating at the mouth since you dragged her in. Now it's time for the most exciting eight minutes you've had in a long time as you watch those pigs disappear the body like a game of hungry, hungry hippos on steroids. Once there is no longer any trace of your ex-mother-in-law's corpse, it's time to toss all of her identification and close into that burn pit and light it up. Be careful to place those teeth and anything not flammable safely in your vehicle for disposal later at a local cemetery with a freshly dug grave set to be occupied the next day. Now that the body's been disposed of, it's celebration time around the fire with the remainder of your Kentucky whiskey to unwind from a hard night's work. Conclusion. Congratulations. You successfully disposed of your ex-mother-in-law's dead bloated corpse, and the world is a much happier place thanks to your careful planning and cool hand loop swagger. Most people who do this type of thing typically get caught from lack of proper planning and careful execution, but by following these simple instructions, you will have that deep down chuckle to yourself for the rest of your life as you rest comfortably in knowing that the pig will never squeal on you. <laughs> Beautiful. You want to you you hear the, the kicker? Sure. Go ahead. Got an A+. Plus. Nice. <laughs> now, now I, I present my usual odd retort. Oh, jeez. Which is this. Okay. <laughs> if you have a secluded place for acquiring said dead bloated corpse and a friend or someone you have leverage on who happens to own a crematorium many of these steps are superfluous well if you own a fishing boat too just there you go well it's about the enjoyment of doing it yourself chuck getting your hands dirty did 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 i say i wouldn't be operating the crematory myself No, I did not. Oh, wow. <laughs> Actually, whenever I submitted that to the professor, I was like, she's still alive, dude. It's just it's a gag. It's a gag. It's just a gag. Yeah, he gave me an A-plus, man. Oh, oh. You, pu- That's okay. terrific. Okay, public disclaimer. We in no way support the <laughs> act of slaughtering one's own mother-in-law uh, philosophically or literally. So just for the clarification of the listener, we must state that we do not encourage you to do harm to any person in any way as a result of hearing this show. Thank you. There's people on the internet that you can find that are more than happy to take fundage for that. Oh, but, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, but I saw that. I said I got to call them and I got to read that to them. But that get is, a kick out of it. That is I, I have, listen, Daniel, if I had a job to offer on the internet and I required a comedy writer, you would be right there, brother. You would have a job. Right now, because you are one of the funniest people I know. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, but I'm weeping on the inside. Oh, don't give me this sad clown routine, brother. Come on. Yeah, no, you have to, at some point, you just you have to stop taking life seriously, man. I, I really do. I know. I know. Oh man. Wow. Well, I didn't expect that tonight. I thought that was great. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Even better is the cadence. I mean, the audio book of Daniel Crumpton is going to be way better. Than... Yes. <laughs> if you put out a comedy book, you got to do the audio. Dude. <laughs> I'm not even, I don't even want to see the text. I want the audio book first. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about doing an audio for the poetry books that are out eventually, but that's down the road. Nice. But yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, but I was in a certain place that night. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> I wrote that bastard in like 15 minutes, smiling wow. the whole time. <laughs> Beads of sweat gently dropping on the last line as he completes it. Say <laughs> <laughs> again? Yeah, they are big, Mason. Really big. Maybe 270 kilos. Oh, wow. Can you hear? Oh, they sound fantastic. 
Ah, 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 ah,